you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, um, back home, and I'm trying to get back into the swing of things, and man, I didn't realize, you know, whew, how tired actually I am. Um, it kind of hit me, not so much Sunday, but as much a uh, as it did this morning waking up. It was just like, wow. But you gotta get back into the grind. There's no rest for the weary and things that I'm trying to get uh, back and going. I've got a bunch of prints and stuff that I have to give away from uh, all the great people who donated. We've been doing the giveaways and stuff and so I'm trying to get those done. And as I was sitting here working on this one, this one right here, I don't know if you guys can how well you can see this. This is a picture that I took in 2014 at the Pro Bowl in Arizona. We got Travis Frederick, Zach Martin, and Tyron Smith, along with LP Lawson. You know, somebody thought that that was Romo, but it's not, it's a 91. That was our long snapper. And you have to look at that and say, that was a pinnacle. This is a pretty cool picture. Because, you know, there's a tent that's over in here. This was on a military base and stuff. And the four of them are all walking there together. I think it's a great looking picture. And can't wait to give it away. But as I started seeing this picture, I started thinking about um, the pinnacle of the Dallas Cowboys offensive line. When you think about that team that should have been a Super Bowl team had it been for the catch-no-catch no catch, uh, situation, you think about what that offensive line did. DeMarco Murray, over 1,800 yards rushing. 1,800 yards. Romo did throw for over 4,000 yards, but he was on fire that season. Because that season, because they were balanced, because they were able to control the line of scrimmage, because they were able to run the ball effectively, the Cowboys did whatever they wanted to on offense because teams had to respect the run, and they had to respect the pass. They couldn't focus in on any one thing because everything starts from the offensive line. It starts from controlling the line of scrimmage. Now, everybody's focusing in on whether Zeke Elliott is, you know, done. Zeke Elliott has lost a step. You know what? Emmitt Smith had lost steps, too. But Emmitt Smith was still productive because the offensive line was still opening up holes. Once you cannot control the line of scrimmage, or once you become one-dimensional, you're not effective. And see, the first half of the season, we controlled the line of scrimmage. You can talk about the wide receivers, you can talk about Zeke, you can talk about Dak. The thing that people don't talk about, and I say it starts from the line, stupid, and goes from there, is once you're able to do that, once you're able to slow down the defenders, once you're able to give the quarterback some time, once you're able to actually open up some holes so that way the running back isn't having to make a move in the backfield, which happened quite often, not just with Zeke, but even with Tony Pollard. And understand, Tony Pollard, everybody's got this saying that Tony Pollard's a better running back. Tony Pollard is a better running back outside in the space. But between the tackles, Zeke Elliott is the better running back between the tackles. Now, if the offensive line doesn't open up holes, 
it doesn't matter who you have back in there at running back. Those guys right there, that was the peak. That was when they were all still young. That was before Tyron Smith started missing, you know, three, four games or half a season at a whack. That's when we had a great center who was the field general, who not only could block, but could recognize and make the play calls at the line of scrimmage. That's where you have Zach Martin is probably the only one who has a position spot that we haven't lost anything because Zach Martin is still one of the best guards of football. But if you believe that everything is Zeke and Dak, then you don't really understand football that much. Bottom line is, for this team to be successful, for Zeke Elliott to rebound, for this team to make a deep run in the playoffs, especially in the playoffs, the offensive line has to be there. And I'll give you an example because we thought that um, Run DMC, um, running back from the Raiders, when the Cowboys signed him, he was averaging 3.9 yards a carry three years straight with the Raiders and getting injured, Darren McFadden, getting injured on a regular. But the Dallas Cowboys offensive line was so good that he averaged almost a full yard more with the Cowboys. The difference being was, and he didn't get injured. The reason being was because he was able to get the football and hit the hole. He wasn't getting tackled in the backfield by 300 pound guys. And that's the problem with our offensive line this past year was more times than not, Zeke's getting the ball and there's a guy in his face and people are saying he can't run. Well, if you're just getting the ball and haven't gotten any momentum going, and you've got two, three guys there in the backfield, you're going down. You're gonna get broken up. The offensive line, and I dare say Joe Feeben, and Feeben, I'm not sure, is a great offensive line coach. To me, I got the feeling like we had when we had Paul Alexander here as the offensive line coach. But the offensive line for this team to be successful is going to have to be good, really good. Because if the Cowboys are able to open up holes at the line of scrimmage, get Zeke Elliott going, it opens up everything. It opens up the play action with Dak Prescott being healthy, being able to move, to bootleg, to actually do run pass options. Once you do that, teams have to respect you and start putting the safety in the box, which means you've got better numbers for CD. Uh, Michael Gallup when he returns, James Washington, Jalen Tober, that these guys don't have to be the best receiver in football because they're not having to be double covered. The more options you can get and more things that teams have to respect, the easier it is for everybody on the offense. See, a lot of times a guy will get a lot of sacks on a defense and one, they're a great athlete, but it's also about the players that are around them too doing their job. As much as everybody likes to point the finger at one guy, football you can't. Football is about a team. You've got to have an offensive line blocking for a quarterback to be able to make the throws. You've got to have an offensive line to open up holes for the running backs to be able to run through. You've got to have guys who can catch the ball when the quarterback throws it to him. If you don't have these pieces all working in unison, it doesn't matter what plays you call. They're not gonna work. And that's where people keep overlooking the problems the Cowboys had on the offensive line. Every time they get a good play, it seemed like there was a penalty that would start it back over. And now instead of being a first and 10 way down the field, you're backed up first and 20 or second and 20 or whatever. It's the line stupid. We need to have another line like these guys. So I'm going to get back to work here. And I hope to see you guys tonight during our live stream at 9 o'clock Eastern. We got work to do, y'all. See you then.